Hmm, I think I go with this one. Let's go. In this video, we will be covering the basics of on-camera flush photography. And also we're gonna cover what sort of flush you might wanna buy and what sort of features you should pay attention to. I remember buying my first flush a couple of years ago and it was back in the days already a very tricky situation. What sort of flush do you wanna buy? What sort of features you need? And overall speaking, it was quite confusing. Nowadays it's even more confusing because there's such a variation of flushes out there. So what is the right flush for you? Basically there are two main options when you're looking into a speedlight. It's a classic French head speedlight which got the square head and also nowadays you can have also a speedlight with a round head. The difference between those two flushes is basically the round head is meant to give you a bit more softer light than the French square head. But to be honest, speaking to different people, with different opinions and experiences. When it comes down to those two flushes, those opinions are negotiable to be honest. Some people prefer the round hat, some people prefer the classic French hat or the square hat. So it's really up to you if you rather would have a round hat or a square hat when it comes down to your speed light. But also nowadays you can have speed lights powered on lithium batteries. And the difference between a lithium battery powered speed light and a 4AA powered speed light is basically that your recycling time is faster with the lithium battery and it allows you to shoot full flush power more frequent than with the 4AA batteries. But also keeping in mind that a lithium powered battery speed light, battery speed light, lithium battery speed light does cost a few more pounds than a classic speed light, which is powered of four AA batteries. So overall speaking, there is no right and wrong. You need to decide which sort of flush you want. Are you on a budget? Then a classic French head speed light with four AA batteries or powered of four AA batteries will do the job just fine. If you don't wanna buy a brand new flush because you don't know if you're actually sticking to flush photography or it is your first flush and you're looking to buy a flush second hand, which is definitely recommended as well if you want to save a bit of money, then there are definitely two features you should look out for. Older flushes, or basically newer flushes, they all shoot high speed sync and offer TTL as well. TTL is basically through the lens and is an automated program for your flush. So basically you decide the settings for the camera, the overall ambient scene you expose for it and the flush decides how much power it needs to expose the scene properly. And if you're looking to buy into a second hand flush and the flush is a bit older already, make sure that those two features are available. But now let's dive into how how to use the on-camera flush in manual mode. But before we're diving into it, I need to do a little disclaimer here. And this has to do with the room size we're shooting at. So basically we wanna expose for my motorcycle helmet, which we gonna pretend it is actually a person in frame. And because the room is fairly small, the likelihood is that the speed light will hit the background at some point and will expose the background. If you're shooting in a real world scenario where the room is bigger, the speed light won't reach this far to hit the background. So your background will probably stay nice and dark and all the colors you have in the background will be there. So keep this in mind, all settings, are example settings for the scene I'm shooting at right now. So you need to figure out later on in a scenario you're shooting at what scene or what settings work best for your scene. So let's dive into it. Now we are basically have set our camera into manual mode and we're gonna switch a flash on in a second as well. Your camera will expose for the ambient scene. So basically your camera decides how the ambient scene will look like. And later when you switch on a flash and you expose with the flush, everything what is in front of the lens will be exposed by the flush. Ambient scene, everything what is in front of the lens. So now the settings I have dialed in at present is ISO 800 by an aperture of f4 60s of a second. 60s of a second is still fast enough to get you crisp images, but also flush freezes action. So you can freeze the subject when a subject is moving with your flush and 60s of a second is fast enough to get crisp images. Now let's take a test shot and see what we get. 
Now you can see when we're switching over to the picture, we get a nice exposed picture for the background. We have a lot of dark going. Our person is fairly underexposed as well, but we have exposed the scene correctly for the lighting in the background. And if we're looking at our histogram, our histogram is basically telling us the same thing that we are fairly dark in the darks and we have a bit of highlights clipping in the back because there's a fairly bright spot in the background. But overall, we have a good starting point. So now we're gonna switch on the flush. Keeping in mind your flush is flexible. So you can tilt your head and make a head work for you as you need to. We're gonna tilt it slightly back and gonna bounce the flush backwards and then forwards to try to avoid basically that the flush hits the background and gives the flush more traveling time from a background, from a ceiling forward to expose for our subject. And when we come down to the flush power output, basically the Godox TT685 Mark II reaches from the most little power of 1 256 of a power up to full power. So we're gonna start off with one full power shot and see how powerful our flushes actually be and how it will affect our picture. By our current settings, you can see we have overexposed quite a bit and brighten the overall image up. Now we're gonna do exactly the opposite and we're gonna go back to our flush power and dial it down to the most littlest power the flush can pull out. In our case, it's once 256 of a power and see how this will react with our taken image. Now you can see with the most little power the flush can produce, tilted backwards, we don't do really much at all with the image. So judging freely on our histogram, we are fairly underexposed. So the aim of the game is we want to have a more or less balanced histogram when we expose for our subject in front of a lens. So freely judging on a histogram, we probably could bump up the speed light by two stops, but we're gonna do it step by step. So we're gonna increase the power of the speed light by one stop, which is basically one click if you go the full power stop. So we're going down to one, one twenty eighth of power and take another shot. So now you've seen a picture with the power output of 1 1 28th from a speed light. We have increased or brightened up the shadow slightly, but we haven't done much to the general exposure. So basically we're gonna bump up the speed light by another stop and take another image and see how this is gonna be. Now you can see as further we increase the power, as more we brighten the image up. Freely judging on a histogram again, we're gonna increase the power now by two stops and we're gonna jump up by two stops. So we're gonna go 1 32th of a power, 1 16th of a power. Take another shot and now we're actually coming to a proper better exposure slowly. We still have a good, decent amount of highlights in the back. We see some color and our helmet is more or less now also good exposed. If you think this exposure is right for your scene and setting you're shooting at, you also got the possibility to increase the flush by a tenth of a power when we just dial the wheel. So basically you could increase it by plus 0 0.1 stops, which is basically tenth of one stop of power. If you think that this overall image taken needs a tiny bit more light or needs a tiny bit of less light, but you don't want to increase or decrease a full stop of power. You can do this also in 0 0.1 stops or one tenth of a power. Let's say we just add another 0 0.3 stops to it. So we're shooting at ISO 800 f4 60th of a second by a flush power output of 1 16th plus 0 0.3. Let's take another shot and see if this makes a difference. So, and if we're comparing now both histograms, you can see that we have stretched out the midtones a bit more compared to the first image. So there's a slight improvement within the midtones. And overall speaking, I think this sort of exposure works quite well. So let's do a little recap here because there are so many ways how you can create good exposure for your photograph in your scene or at the location you are at. The way I shown you is just one way of many how to get proper exposure with your on-camera flash. So basically your camera will 
exposed for the ambient scene. Your camera will see what the background looks like and your flash basically will expose for the subject in front of your camera. Of course, there are many ways how you can tilt your flash and a given scene or scenario you're shooting at. If you're shooting in a smaller room and you want to try to give the flash as much traveling time as possible to hit first the back wall and then bounce forward and try to keep a background as dark as possible, then probably the easy way or the best way is to tilt your flash backwards. In other scenarios, you might need to tilt it forward or you might even need to tilt it backwards or slightly to the corner backwards. It's a bit of test and trial what works in your given um, situation when you're shooting flush. But also as more you shoot flush, as more you get used to your settings. As an example, I can tell you if I want to shoot a lower flush power output in my studio, I can shoot easily ISO 800, a speed light on 1 16th of a power by f8 60th of a second and then get a good, nice, decent exposure for this what I'm looking for. So as more you shoot as more you learn as more you get used to settings and you probably just need one or two clicks of power to figure out what's the right power output of a speed light for your given scenario so with that said i hope that you liked this video this video was helpful to you and it gave you a bit of understanding how to balance your flash towards your exposure when it comes down to shooting on camera flash and with that said let me know what you think like comment subscribe do all the good stuff and with that said i'm gonna see you in the next one cheers mate